Several weeks ago, my friend Dennis, a ham radio operator, call sign November 6 Kilo India 73, mentioned to me that he was looking for a good home for this vintage RC tugboat. It had belonged to a fellow ham, Richard L. Hathaway Jr. of Coronado, California, who I understand has since passed away. I quickly expressed interest, and before I knew it, Dennis had come to visit and brought it with him. He explained that it was a 70s vintage boat, but didn't know much else about it. For a few days, I was too busy to do much with it, but then I got to work on the restoration. It came with some pretty interesting equipment, such as this customized period control system with twin motor controls, steering knob, analog voltmeter, and power switch lockout lever. This was presumably the charge board, and it supposedly operated on 53 megahertz. It came with this charger, which was most certainly a later addition, and these batteries, which turned out to no longer hold a charge. It was mostly complete, but was a bit neglected, with some parts damaged. It seemed to have a solid hull, well-made brass rudders and props, and shafts. There were a few scale details, but it was obvious there was another purpose for this boat than just its scale appearance. I did a little research and found that it was built from a Dumas Shelley Foss kit and was the 36-inch version. The kit has not been in production for some time. Inside the wheelhouse, I found a bullet-style camera, tinted front windows, a bifocal-style lens over the bottom half of the camera, and Mr. Hathaway's call sign for the camera to see. There was also a digital compass display in the camera's field of view. These were probably added later, in the late 1990s or early 2000s, I'm guessing. The pilot house is simply lifted off, held in place by these two electrical-style pins. The cabin top is held in place by these two thumb screws. Inside is a mix of old and new electronics, a video transmitter with its RF connector for the transmitting antenna, radio control receiver box, switches, fuse, and PWM controllers for the motors. These controllers looked much newer than the rest of the electronics, and I'm guessing they are from the late 2000s. The cabin and deck lifted up, revealing the inside of the hull, in which were located the steering linkages, steering servo, a mysterious micro switch that is only activated when turning left, the shaft logs, U-joints, electric motors, lead ballast blocks, and a shelf where the electronic compass board had been located. One of the motors was badly misaligned and the wiring was old. Clearly, lots of this old equipment would have to go, but I'll keep it for its historic value. Not throwing anything out here. After hooking up an external PWM controller to the motors, it was clear they were in excellent condition and would stay. After making some adjustments to the motor alignment, they both ran smoothly. As I was removing, some of the old equipment, I opened the boxes to get a look at this vintage radio equipment. It was clear that some of it was built from kits and had been further modified.
After the electronics were removed, I turned my attention to the hull. There had been some damage to the front of the hull, and I reinforced it, also adding further parts to the cap rail to tie it together and make the bow stronger. I taped off the propellers, sanded the hull down, filling in some cracks with epoxy. Then I coated the entire hull with penetrating epoxy to seal it and protect the wood. I painted it with a high-quality marine primer coating and gave it several top coats of semi-gloss black. I then improvised a level marker and used it to mark a proper waterline. I found some red oxide automotive primer that closely resembles anti-fouling paint and gave her a fresh bottom job. I made a carrying stand for her from carbon fiber molded aircraft landing gear struts and nylon webbing on a plywood base. I installed a Futaba receiver, programmed the aircraft style 2.4 GHz spread spectrum radio for joystick control of the two motors using Elevon mixing, and made new steering links from solid aluminum. I installed a new high-tech HS645 Metal Gear Ultra Torque steering servo as well, and connected it number four channel, left stick, on the radio control transmitter. I also remounted the speed controllers close to the motors, made a new silicone wiring harness, pumped fresh marine grease into the shaft logs and steering logs, and I'm using a lithium-ion Tesla-style battery pack with quality 18650 cells. It's a project that's far from finished, and I still have the deck, cabin, and superstructure to restore. But for now, I'm anxious to get it into the water and can feel good doing so as the hull is sound and well sealed. So this may be the first time in decades that it's seen the water. I'm also anxious to see how my joystick controls work and make sure that there are no leaks from the shaft logs. We pretty soon decided that it worked great and would be a whole lot of fun if we had something to tow. There was our neighbor, Marie, with her empty inflatable boat just sitting there. It didn't take much convincing to get her, Dad, Pete, and the best dog in the world, Kujimo, on board and test out the towing capacity of this cute little tugboat. We spent the rest of the afternoon giving rides and had a great time. Do it. Yeah.
the little 36-inch long tug performed flawlessly. At the end, we checked the bilge. Dry. The motors and controllers were barely warm, and the lithium-ion battery was cold. We look forward to the further restoration of this vintage FPV tugboat and future adventures with it on the water. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.